you ready for Time in the Word? Time in the Word. by Rejoice in Jesus Ministries, an on-fire Bible-centered teaching ministry based in Los Angeles, California, with outreach throughout the United States, stretching from coast to coast. Join us now as Pastor Chester C. Pippen Jr. brings us an exciting, anointed message. So I want to start off um, just sharing a little bit about your spiritual DNA. Have any of you guys ever done those ancestry DNA tests? Or that, oh, everybody's not into that. I see Joyce back there. Okay, well, that's something I just recently did. Me and my sister and um, Jeremiah and Joey, we all sent you know, they have you, uh, like, spit inside of us something and send it off, and then they can find out stuff about where you're from and who you are and all of that. So we had, we had um, run the test, and it takes about six weeks or something, six to eight weeks for it to come in. So you kind of have to forget about it for a while, and then it comes in, okay? Now, that, I remember being really excited about it, like trying to find out, you know, you just want to know what, what, where you're from and all this kind of stuff. I don't know how, I think they're pretty accurate, but they kind of find the regions that, that you're from, kind of. People that have DNA similar or somewhere, da, 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 da. So anyway, um, that was one of the things that we did, and then Debbie and I sat down and got on the computer together and compared ours and and did all this exciting stuff, you know, just trying to find out, well, I bet that came from back here, and I bet this came from this, and, you know, we were kind of going into where we think some of the genetics came from. So um, it, it was fun doing that, but in this message, what I want to talk about is your spiritual DNA, because just like you can find out things about yourself, by looking at, I looked up at, looked at, um, up the name DNA. You guys, does anybody know what that word is? It's an interesting word. Let me see if I can find it. It's called deoxyribonucleic acid. It's the genetic code that determines all the characteristics of a living thing. So whatever, whatever your DNA is comes from your parents. It kind of makes you who you are today. Now, of course, our decisions and an environment and things that we go through have some type of influence on us. But when you first get here, have you ever noticed kids? Like you can kind of see a little attitude on a baby. Yeah. You guys ever seen attitudes yeah. on the babies? They kind of got this little, some yeah. kind of, this thing that they do and they haven't really learned yet. A lot of times, stuff comes through your DNA. And, you know, if you don't like something, you blame it on the opposite sex parent. So you're like, that's, <laughs> that's you. Did you see that? That was you. <laughs> but the DNA is what, it's, it kind of looks like a, a ladder. When you look at the picture of how it's laid out, it looks like a broken ladder, kind of. And it, it actually shows things that you got from your father, things you got from your mother, the grandparents, great-grandparents, and it goes back. And so when Debbie and I did ours, we were like, well, what's going on? I thought, I thought we were going to find things like, because, you know, we had always heard this Indian this and that was in the family and this is in the family. But almost everything came from either an African root or European so I said, now, what is that about? I thought it was that middle stuff. The middle stuff, I, it's in there somewhere, but I, I didn't find it yet. So I said, what, what is going on with that? 
And then I thought about how, the, I don't know the story on all parts of my family, but I know on my grandmother's mother's side, on the mother's side of my grandmother's family, my great-grandmother was a slave. You know, because I'm from Virginia. See, you guys, you guys didn't migrate just from Virginia. I, I migrated right when the slaves came in. When they came from Africa, if you, look, if you look at the United States and you look at Africa, when the slaves were brought on the ship to Virginia, I mean, to, right in the south southern states, which Virginia is one of them. So I have stories of when the slaves came in, what happened. My great-grandmother was um, out in the field. She was a field slave. She got brought into the house, the main house, and married the master's brother. And they were all George Washingtons. And we have a bunch of George Washingtons in our family. They're named George Washington, because I guess they got the slave person's name or whatever. So she married the brother. Now, I heard it was a lot of persecution. So I don't know how long the marriage lasted. I don't know all the stories because she's gone now. She used to take care of us, so I knew her very well. She used to tell, tell our mother stuff. We'd get our butt beat, so I remember all of that. But she ended up marrying this man. So really what we have, what Debbie and I found, was it was our African side of it or it was European and Great Britain for me, a lot of Great Britain in there. And I'm like, where did that come from? But they, they actually showed, and then I pulled out a map and started looking to see, well, where's Great Britain? And it's over Africa. It's, I mean, it's like Africa's down here. But if you go up a little higher, you see Great Britain. And then they said, when they say Great Britain, a lot of French comes out of there too. And so it's, you know, we found all kinds of things we're all mixed in with, but it's, a lot of it comes from your roots. Whatever happened way back there. And you guys are more over here if you didn't, if you live over like toward California. So you guys might have some other things. I don't know. I'm not sure everybody, but you guys can figure it out yourselves. But it's just kind of fun trying to find out what you're made of and, and what's inside of you. Now, even better than what you're made of in the natural, you want to know. Now, I'm not, I'm not the kind that's like going all spiritual and not on the other natural. No, I like natural too because we are spirit, soul, and body. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with finding out little things like that, but it's not a big deal. But spiritually, what are you made out of? That's what we're going to talk about today. What does your spiritual DNA look like? And we want to know from our heavenly father, what did I inherit from my heavenly father? What was passed down through him to me? And if so, why ain't I acting like it? Anybody got that? Why, why am I not identifying with my spiritual heavenly father and what he has passed down to me. So I want to start off with Genesis. Let's go back to the beginning. And I'm going to read a few little scriptures along the way. It's not going to be real long, you guys. But even if it is, you're finding out who you are. Amen? So I'm going to read Genesis 1. So, Linda, could you read Genesis 1, 1 through 5, please? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Okay, so that starts off just talking about how God created from the very beginning. In the beginning, there was who? God. Okay, what does God mean? 
what is God? When you think about God, what do, you, what do you think God means? Like if you walk up to somebody and you say, God loves you, and they say, well, who is this God? What does your mind think? Creator. What else? Self-existent one. Okay, now I was reading something today, and it was, it was, they were trying to give an analogy so we can kind of, you know, because we have to try to comprehend with our pea brains. So they were saying that if you were in a room that was totally empty, had nothing in it, and I mean nothing, not even a little piece of dust, nothing is in this room. No matter how much time goes by, nothing can never lead to something. So thousands, millions of years can go by. If that room has nothing in it, that room will continue to have nothing in it. Um, if it doesn't have anything, if you put something in it, but it, it's not something that can reproduce, then the only thing that will stay in it for thousands of years is that one thing you put in there. So say we, were in, we had this room, this room, nothing is in this room. It's totally void of anything. And somebody was to come and set this desk here, and this is the only thing in this room. I mean, it might maybe deteriorate over a period of time, but the point is the only thing that's going to be in this room years from now, it, it might be in a different form, but is the, le the leftovers of that desk. It's not created to reproduce anything. But if you were to bring an animal in that could reproduce with another animal, then you leave the room. You could come back later, and that room could be full because this was born, and this was reproduced, and that was reproduced. So the point that they were making was no matter what, if you don't have something that can reproduce, then it's not going to increase. It's not going to grow. And the only one, the only one that can cause something to come out of nothing is God. Yeah. <laughs> only God. Only God can walk up in a room like this and look around and there's nothing in the room and say, let there be, and there is. Yeah. 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 Only God. And see, when you think of that and you, you ponder on it, you think about that, you're like, man, he's, he's just so, so in a class of his own. God is just so different from us. He is so, there's nothing nowhere near touching him. That's why when, when people try to worship the angels, they're like, get up. <laughs> they're like, no, get up. I might be a helper. I might, be, I might know God. I might worship God. I might, I might uh, be there to follow his commands and orders. But get up because there is nobody like him. Nobody like him. And that's the first thing that I think of when I want to tell somebody about God. I want to tell him about something that exists apart from everything else. If there is nothing else, God still is. He has always been. He didn't start somewhere. We know life as starting somewhere. When God created the earth, it started somewhere. So in our minds, everything has to start somewhere. But God is the self-existent one. Say that with me, God. It's the self-existent one. The Bible calls him in the Hebrew Elohim. He's the, he's the God that's creator of everything. Because of, everything can come out of him. All he's got to do is want it, decide he wants it, speak it, and it happens. Now, this is who we are dealing with. You get that? This is who, when we say, I don't know how God's going to work this one out. 
I don't know how he's going to handle this. Why can't he? He can make something out of nothing. He can change your circumstances in a, a second of time. He can make your little, you, you might have a little, you know, I, I don't ever make, I don't, my bank account never goes over $700. When I get to 700, I think I'm rich. God might be like, oh, are you dealing with you and what you can do? Are you dealing with the one that creates? Are you dealing with the one that can take your penny and turn it into thousands and millions of dollars? I was listening to something today. They were talking about some man that had so much money that they named three different people, Oprah and two other people, and they said, that man makes so much money that he had $5 million in the bank somewhere and he forgot about it because it was so insignificant <laughs> in comparison to his billions. He had billions. So $5 million, somebody had to remind him, you have an account over here with $5 million in it. And they said this man made so much money, it made Oprah's money and named two other people. Their money was like nothing in comparison. They said that 82% of the money is in the hands of 1% of the population. 82% of all money is in the hands of 1% of the population. And half the time, I mean, I, I know some people inherit stuff, but there are some people that just have good ideas. Some people know how to create something. Some people let even God's creative juices when they don't even know how to, how to let God's creative juices. Some people are creative and they just step out. And we sit and we think, I, okay, I'm going to try to pay my tithes. But when I pay them, they ain't going to have much money left. And we let the devil just make us get scared all the time. And God wants us to focus on who he is. Now, if he created the earth just by saying, let there be, and there was, then he turns around and calls us small G-O-D-S gods. He calls us small. I'm going to read that. I have Leonard read it in a second. But he calls us small G-O-D-S gods. So he's telling us that you're my little godites. You know, whatever your parents called you when you were little, their little junior or their little whatever, you know, the, or by the last name, God is like, you come out of me. And I want you to watch how I, I do things and then imitate it. Start imitate. Start changing your mind about what you think are your limitations and start looking at your heavenly father. And seeing how, how great he is. When I was lying in that bed, I was like, this is not a big deal to God. I don't know how to fight this, but God does. He knows. And then actually, I turned around and said, you know, God says he'll work everything together for the good. I ended up enjoying the month of January. Because, because I was at home, I got all kinds of things done. Because that became my environment. So now I can go do this paperwork over here and handle this over here and organize this over here. And I started doing all kinds of things because I was at home and I couldn't really go anywhere. And God will even take the things the devil means for evil, flip that thing around and use that thing for his good. And actually, not just make it good, but make it better than what would have happened if you never had gone through that. Because you know why he does that? Because he is Elohim. He is the creator. It's not a big deal for him to flip your circumstances around and turn around and make that horrible thing that happened to you end up being the best thing that could have happened to you. That's why you have somebody like Joyce Meyer being raped continually by a father. In the cemetery, he would take her to the cemetery and rape her. And that woman can stand up today, preach the word of God, 
and say, if I had to go through this again, I would go through the same thing again because I see the results of having gone through that. And see, that's what God wants from us. He wants us to say, you know what? Instead of, why did I ever go through that? And why did God let me, why did he let this happen to me when I was little? And what? Take that thing and say, you know what, devil? What you meant for evil, God meant for good. Yeah. And guess what? I'm a little Godite. Yeah. I'm a little, little small G-O-D as God, but I'm still a God. And I'm going to get in here and create with that thing. That thing that you meant for evil, God's going to take that and it's going to end up being the thing, the stepping stone for me. And I'm going to step out and fulfill purpose. And God will not, the devil will not stop me in what God has for me. That has to be the victory. That has to be the fight. That you, you know what? We all got to do it. And guess what? I can't do it for you and you can't do it for me. You can pray for me, but I got to do my own battling. And guess what? God says it's a good fight. It's a good fight. Say that. It's a good fight. fight. I'm going to fight the good fight of faith. And see, part of fighting the good fight of faith is holding on to your true identity. It's like if your last name is small G-O-D God, if your last name, well, I'm I'm a little God, then you hold on to that and you got to renew your mind. The Bible tells you to be transformed by what? Renewing of your mind. Now, people don't like you when you're too secure. <laughs> you guys hear me? And I'm not talking about being cocky because if you know you're the small G-O-D God, it ain't nothing to be cocky about. You know that you all you're doing is trying to imitate your heavenly father. The one that gets all the glory and the credit is him. So nobody's speaking of arrogance, but we're talking about confidence. Jesus was confident in who he was. They got so mad with him when he said he was the son of God. They got so mad, the Bible says, that they, were, they just, oh, he blasphemes. Imagine God blaspheming. Yeah. They, 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 it, it makes people mad when you know who you are. When somebody looks at you and says, oh, you just never seem like you're going to get it together. And you say, no, I'm not going to get it together. I already got it together. Because grace says that it was already done. (laughs) See, we're not trying to make something happen. By grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourself. So you're not trying to make something happen. Grace means God went ahead of you and made it happen already. And because God went ahead and made it happen already, he's not trying to get you to work hard to try to be a certain way. He's trying to get you to step out of that old shell and realize this is who you are. See, did you see the difference? There's a big difference in trying to make something happen and and trying to uh, walk in what's already been done. It's already been done. You are already God's child. All you have to do is believe on Jesus. How many believers out here? How many ask Jesus into your heart and you really believe you are a child of God? If you don't think you're a child of God, then we got work to do with you. Because you got to get in the kingdom first. But if you're already in the kingdom, then right now all we got to do is start renewing our minds. We've got to step into this new identity and we got to walk in it. And then you got to go along be creative and step out and let the Holy Spirit tell you how to create what, what he wants from you next. You know, if you see things that don't look like God, what do you do? Because we live in a politically correct society that wants us to go along with some foolishness. With some foolishness. Like God created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. And I don't care how politically correct it sounds. God created a man to be with a woman. I'm not going to stop preaching that. And God did not create you to change who you are after you get here. 
when you get here, whatever you came here as is how God sees you. And when you go out of here, you're going to account to him for what he created you to be. So I just want to say that, that it's going to be hard in these last days making a stand. But guess what? The greater one lives in you. And greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And I want to encourage you guys, do not bend. Do not compromise your stand. Do not get humanistic because the world is full of humanism. And, and they seem like they're so nice. It's like hold hands and sing songs together. We are the world. Come on, everybody, let's sing it. We are the children. No, you guys are like, I ain't singing that. Because, see, the very people that sing, we are the world, we are the children, you are the world, you're right. And you're the children of the devil. Because, see, when you, when you stand for righteousness and you act like your father, you're going to say some things that's going to make some people mad. We would like to send you a tape of this entire message. For any donation of $5 or more, we will send you a CD. For any donations of $12 or more, we will send you a DVD. Please write to us at Rejoice in Jesus Ministries, P.O. Box 47775, Los Angeles, California, 90047, or call 323-REJOICE. Please mention tape offer number TITW132. Six. That is tape offer number T I T W one three two six. Hi, you know the Bible says that all things are upheld by the power of this word. That means when you put the word in your heart, it will produce life and health to all your flesh. It will also produce faith so that whatever you come up against, you can overcome it. But remember, you won't have the victory you desire unless you make a decision to not allow anything to get in the way of your intimacy with Jesus, nor allow anything to distract you from your time in the word. Thank you for watching Time in the Word. If you are blessed by today's message, we'd love to hear from you. You can write us at P.O. Box 47775, Los Angeles, California, 90047. Or call us at 323-735-6923. That's 323-REJOICE. And if you're in the Los Angeles area, visit our worship service on Saturday nights at 7.30 p.m., 1304 Cochran Avenue, corner of Cochran and Packard Street. And again, thank you for watching Time in the Word.